Okay, so today, what's what we're doing? In this video, we're going to be looking at some cards that have been made by other people on MGT Cardsmith. Do that, I will put the link in the description afterwards. I I don't know if I can do that right now or not. Hey, cards are live. Comments are actually turned off. If we once again, I will put that on there. Uh, you can go to Magic Internet, and eventually, I might actually be looking at your cards. We're gonna be looking at random. I'm gonna hope it's not. If it is, I'll kind of skip over it. And there's certain other. Um, I have a premium member, so I can see all the cards, every card out there. I don't know which one this is showing. All right, so there are a ton of cards, and they're random. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do in this one. In this video, is I'm actually gonna look at the card and think what I actually and show you tell you why why would what I rate what I rate it on a scale of one to ten and what I think is rare to be and all the course office abilities. So we'll go to random card. There you can see there's four cards right here. I'm not gonna look at those. We're just gonna look at them at random. I can you favorite these things too. Uh, I might not be able to pronounce these things. Planeswalker, uh, Sword, Cleot, the non peril. Okay, it's Billy's. It is difficult, it might be difficult for you to read. I'm gonna go, I think. Can you just... it might be a little difficult for you to read. A little better. Okay, so here we go. Plus one until your next turn. Whenever you, whenever multiple creatures would deal damage to this creature, prevent damage dealt by all but one of those creatures. Interesting. That's, it, that's an interesting tactic. Um, and, and you make it your creature that is attacking you that doesn't do much damage. That's that's inter that's an interesting first ability. I honestly think that's good. I might comment on these in a later port. I'm not gonna actually comment on this one because it doesn't make sense. Uh, minus two, which is uh, it, it's the it deals damage equal to its loyalty count loyalty to any target. Which for anyone that's not new to magic, um, this dot here. And let's see if we first. That's a little to counters. And there's a three little to counters in this case, and then this. And when every time you plus one, plus one, that adds one little to counter to it. Maybe your minus two, you subtract two little to counter to it. Uh, minus X, choose up to X target creatures you control, and those creatures each fight up to X target creatures you control. Okay, now planeswalkers are generally mythic. I've made some planeswalkers that I'll show in a different video, probably. Maybe I'll show some in this video that are not. I would not call mythic. Planeswalkers are generally mythic, and it's actually pretty. This is actually pretty cool looking card. To be honest, mythics. I think it's it's fairly it's fairly reasonable. To be honest, it prevents itself from damage. Image. On a scale of one to ten, I probably give it about seven. It's not great. Its abilities are not overpowered. Or not over not overpowered. Decent. This is a decent card. It's a, it's a decent card. And we'll just go ahead and move to the next one. Battle of the I can't pronounce that, so we're not gonna bother pronouncing it. Of something fields. Battle of his destroy all non land permits. Okay, so when I'm looking at cards like this, 
I'm thinking about what its use would be and how hard it would be to use it. You have to have seven man to this. And to be honest, there are other cards that are cheaper than that in the actual game that do exactly the same thing. It would I would definitely say this would be a rare card. This is definitely a reasonable willing to being a rare card. I think it's a little expensive for its um, ability, for what it does. So in my opinion, on a scale of 1 to 10, this is probably about 6. It's not terrible. It can be used. It just might be a little difficult to use at the time of actually doing this card. Hmm. Tyrant, Tyrant of the Skies. I was going earlier. Flying Haste Double Strike. Already crazy at this moment. Um, when you, you discard a card, Tyrant of the Skies deals two damage to any target, and you draw a card. That's a pretty powerful ability right there. Wow. And then you can pay one and one red mana. Get a discard card. Put a woman counter on it. If it's the third time this ability has resolved this turn, you remove all counters from it, and it deals that much damage to each creature with flying. Interesting card concept. Definitely think of Mythic. It's I think honestly that's probably reasonable pricing. Pricing cost reasonable cost honestly to me. In my opinion, I think also that makes perfect sense. Strikes. I'm not sure I would rate that any different. I think that's also mythics perfect. On a scale of one to ten, to me. Considering its second its last ability and it has flying and double strike, the haste for one thing, it's pro I would say probably a nine. There is one card, there's one thing that, that bugs me about this card. And the fact that it removes everything once you do get to it. Once you get, once you get, once the third, once you get to your third ability this turn, why would anyone actually do that? That's the one thing I don't understand about that card. It's a pr pretty good card, though, I will say that. Black Widow. Okay, so I actually have seen some of these cards, I think, before, but I'm not sure. I think I saw some of the um, X-Men cards. We might see some today. Mythic uh, has a legendary creature, human energy. I'm not really going to read the things. It's a legendary creature. You can tap the same one, one yellow or white, whatever you like to call it, one, one swamp or black. Exile target creature, whenever black when it leaves the battlefields. Return all cards exiled back to their hand. Eh. While I agree that is a really good ability, you basically it's basically you replace a card. And it does have death touch. That's that's decent. The cost man is perfect is pretty much perfect. Mythic though? I'm not really sure I would go with Mythic here. I think, honestly, Rare is probably reasonable. Uh, in my opinion, I would say Rare is probably more likely what I would put in this card as. Although I think it's really good. Very and decent. It's a decent card. I have to say, I think it's missing a key aspect, and that would be the card should be exiled. You tap it, exile it, you can continue to exile, and there should be a second ability that says you can remove all cards and do something. But that's actually, not, but it's still not a bad card. I will probably give it on a scale of 1 to 10, 8 out of 10. Decent, it's a decent card. Next card over. And that's it. Next card over. T 
Tyrant of Earth. Okay, you can't use this. Okay, so here's one thing. This is not allowed. Technically, this, this, this card, by the way, none of these cards can technically be played in Magic, in Magic Arena. And the reason you can tell that is that you have this little card, because of this little hammer, little hammer four sort of looking thing. This is not, listen to me, this is exactly a copy of a actual card. Seven and one forest, trample and hexproof, tyrant and giants. Whenever tyrant of the earth attacks, you may have all creatures block it this turn if able. Then it gains indestructible until end of turn. If five more creatures are flying it. Oh, I misread the card. I was like, I was thinking, wait, what? <laughs> no, it's if then it gains it is indestructible if you have five more creatures. Okay. Decent. Um, decent card points. Uh it's then set two four two pay two four search your library for a basic land card. To be honest, it's bottle. on. Spot on this card is awesome. Awesome. I definitely do not see any being any other rating. Definitely a uh, definitely mythic. It is missing a aspect. It's actually a little bit worded a little bit, um weirdly. I would probably said when it attacks, you may have all creatures block this turn. Then if five more creatures are blocking it, it gets indestructible. It's just a little bit wording, so on a scale of one to ten, probably that's probably giving it an eight. It's still a great card, It'd definitely be mythic for me. If I was to raise cards. Thor. <laughs> Asgardian Avenger. It has haste and flying. Okay, seems reasonable. Four, one fire, one sun, or whatever the seal. Other I have Guardian gets plus one plus one. Whenever four attacks, other attacking creatures get plus two plus zero to end a turn. Well, <laughs> realistically, <laughs> yeah, I can see this being mythic. I can see it being mythic. Um. Yeah, I agree. I, I totally agree with this card. It's, it may be a little bit expensive, but not too much expensive. This is probably easily a 9 out of 10. And for its ability, I, I think, honestly. The only thing I think could be a little bit better is if it actually... Um... Had vigilance or something that very I think it could be a little bit better, maybe a little bit cost primitive. But honestly, it's it's a pretty decent card. I say nine out of town that one. I favor that, but I'll favor some cards that have to. That's not a magic card. That's just someone making their own cards for it. Uh, Thebath Pharaoh King. Or, as long as you control a fairy, again, this creature has death touch. Whew. Ouch. Um, you pay X and one island or water source. The card player discards X cards from their library. Whew. And pay one and one swamp. Target player reveals their hand. You choose one non land card for, from it. Yeah, player discards that card. There are actually several cards that have these segment abilities I've seen. And honestly, this is, I think, a very, very good um, interpretation. It's not too powerful. You have to pay X Man to get how much enough cards out there. And honestly, I give this a 10 out of 10. This is a, this is a perfectly named out card. And no, I do not think it should be mythic. Because I don't think that it makes much sense in this case because it doesn't have um, 
it's not powerful enough for it. Okay, next one here. Mr. Tom. Okay. Uh, that's not an angel. <laughs> that is not an angel. That's a, that's a unicorn. But okay. Flying Benjamin Tom is on the field. He is restricted as long as Mr. Tom is held by you. Kind of a useless ability, but okay. You pay uh, one sun, one fire, one forest. Mr. Tom's in the field is your hands. So, okay, so they, they're using this as a commander card. Decent. Interesting is. But um, in command, I think you can, well, I don't know. Can you actually just? I don't know about this card so much. It seems like this second ability does it. This uh, one right here, where my thing is right now. I don't think that's really yet useful. But maybe it is. It's it's just nothing I would. I will give this an eight out of ten. I think it's a decent card. And it would be definitely good for Commander. I don't play Commander too much, so I can't give it a full rating. But uh, it makes sense. Oh. <laughs> that has you funny. I just now reread the card. So basically, if you're playing Commander, you can play it for you can call it can cost less. That's actually interesting. Still an AL10, but honestly, an interesting card. Good job for uh, Nibble or Nibble. I don't know how it's pronounced. Mogul Drone. Flying. You could sacrifice it and it gets two damage to any target. Well, I would assume that's what it is. It's it's going off the page. You gotta quit. You guys, I will say this to you guys, to anyone who does do this, is take this part right here and move it. That's all you got to do. It's not difficult. I don't often, whenever I do cards, um, my cards will not have a um, in, ending. Um, I can't think what's called. Some other text that doesn't have any relevance to the card. It doesn't. I don't vote. I won't. Work, I won't have that in my cards. Elsa the Impossible. Is that what it is? Hmm, okay. Again, most planes walk which are mythics, but we'll see if I actually rate it thick. Um plus one, draw a card, discard a card. That is way too powerful. <laughs> Minus five, great five, four, six skele four, two, four, three skeletons. And my fifteen you gain two shots. In control of all creatures. Way too powerful. Definitely, if it is a card, it is definitely a mythic. There is no way it's not. <laughs> it would take four turns. It's going to take five, four turns to seek everything. Which it, take, it will take a long time to get to it. There is a flaw in this card. It's it very difficult. It will be very difficult to cast for one thing. And um, its second ability is way too powerful. If, so I play in five turns. I just get to do it again. I get to put five for this. That's just that's just powerful, honestly. Um, cool car concept. It's actually just stand on a scale of one to ten. I have to give this a five because it's too powerful. And what else I'll do if I if it, I think it's too powerful, I would probably play around five or. Play around five because it's actually it's just it's just too powerful. There's no way you anyone they I'm actually think at a realistic point would they ever put this card into the game? And no, I don't think they were or really put anything like it. No, they would definitely not. There are some points where you gain control of all creatures, but it's because it's not planeswalkers attacking from one thing or blocking. It's already a card, I think, somewhere. I don't know what the name of the card is, but it's, it's a decent card. I, I will say on a scale of it, an eight out of ten. Okay. 
General Pasta. Obi Wan Compromise. Oh, I bought what they do. Human Jedi Master. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent creates a 1 1 some sort of drone, which we saw earlier. Creature token. Whenever it blocks a creature, scry X, where X is the number of creatures that attacks you and draw a card. Sounds kind of difficult for me to answer. On this one, I'm sorry. This is, this is a guy to be aware, non mythic. Well, I agree. It definitely does belong. It's you're actually giving your opponents an advantage. With the, even with this one card. And actually, here's the problem. There's another thing. Arrow's card. You can't cast this card. There is nobody to cast it because it doesn't have a mana cost. Unless you tell me, it might be it might be double sided. I don't think so. I think most times with their double side, their plays Walker and it's. I'm sorry, it doesn't look right to me. It uh, maybe we'll find out something different. So for right now, but right now, it gives your opponent an advantage. That makes it. If I started at six, just to say, uh, whenever it blocks a creature, it does actually give you give you advantage there. I would probably say six out of ten on this one. It gives your opponent advantage as advantage, and it doesn't have a mana cost. There's two problems with that. Um, whoever the creator of this card is, you need to fix that. It does need to have a mana cost. Unless you have a specific thing there. We'll see if there is. Um, Jim Boston. But still cool card, honestly. Tyrant of the Void. Wow, wow. Indestructible for fly, Jim, minute, shrimp. Uh, for those people that really don't know what Shroud is, Shroud means it can't be targeted by spells or abilities. It's basically hexproof. It's basically super hexproof. Tap 5, exile target creature from your graveyard. So put X11 one, one counters on it. And then or put a number of 11 one, one counters on it. Equals to exile creature's power. Then create X11 one, one Coral creatures, tokens, where X is a num is equal to the number of exile creature tokens. Then, if you control thirteen or more non-legendary horror creatures, destroy all creatures you control and draw thirteen cards. <laughs> okay, there's only I I think definitely would be a mythic. There's only one flaw I have to say. You cannot hold 13 cards in your hand. It just isn't possible. <laughs> okay. Physically, you can. In the game of Magic, you're limited to seven cards. So unless you have, you have to have a something else. I can't remember what it's called. Actually, I don't know if you'll be able to comment down below or anything, but... Yeah, you will be able to. I will have to turn the comments on eventually if I can figure out how to do that. But honestly, it's not a terrible card. I would probably give it an 8 out of 10. Supra superior tactics. Put a training count on our creature. Doesn't really exist yet, but it works. Um, whenever a creature with a train counter on it becomes blocked by a creature without a train counter, reveal a card from your from their hand. If you reveal a card with the same preferred man cost or equal to the blocking creature's power or toughness or its toughness. Tap that creature and remove it from combat. If no other creatures are blocking that attacking creature, it is treated as if it wasn't blocked. Okay. Oh, wow. I can see it. It's about the right cost and probably about the right rate. That's actually kind of that's kind of insane, honestly. Be honest, that's that's insane. Uncommon, think I think realistic to be uncommon. I think if if um wizards did take the um realist into account, actually decide to play this card, it might be rare. But also, I think it's rare. I'm gonna give this a uh, 
nine out of ten. There's only one thing I really love about about this is it could potentially be a rare. And it's, it's not anything about this. You know, I think honestly, it's it's a very good card. So good job, good good job to that. Good job, honestly. Uh, we have to go and get rid of that past that one. I can't do anything with tokens. Bang. Destroyed our creature. <laughs> Bang. I'm just going to shoot you down. Like, I know you guys are not allowed to see my... Uh... Are you seeing me with you? I don't think so, actually. Okay, well... Oh, well... No way I would show you my webcam, but uh, I guess you guys aren't seeing it. So the way this works, this little circle thing, I'm going to circle it for maybe a few seconds or so. Um, the way it works is you can pay two life, or you can pay one black mana for each one of those. If you do that, you can do that for any time. This would be in case that you happen to have, let's say you had two black mana. Too swamp, but you, and you had plenty of so you had enough life to cast it. Then you can pretend you can you can do that. I think realistically, it could be a common. I think that's realistic. Troop transport. <laughs> Beginning of your upkeep, you may play, put charge count on this card. If you tap it, you may put a creature from converted with converted mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on troop transport from your hand to the battlefield. Interesting. Interesting. Common. It's probably realistic, I think. On a scale of one to ten, nine, I think. I not. I think there's one thing that could be proved about this card, is it should. All right, we're gonna go through one more card here, and then we're gonna look at some of the cards I created. Burning hands. No, we cannot look at that card. <laughs> We're going to look at some of the cards that I created, and you guys can go ahead and comment down below once I put the comments on. Ultra Prime, Legendary Artifact Creature. Where it enters the battlefield, each player shuffles their graveyards into their libraries and control seven cards. If you control three more artifacts, you may cast a card from your hand without paying its mana cost. And as long as you have its cards, it has no mana inside. Definitely mythic, no doubt. Legendary Artifact Creature. Well, I might actually say if they put this into the game, it probably might they might put it as a rare. But I think honestly, mythic is a, re is a reasonable. Yes. On a scale of one to ten. Okay, let's see what we got here. We're gonna look at the cat and life set. That's the one I have for me. Realistic mount cards and oh look at yeah some premier first card this is actually an insane card if it was actually made which is why I probably would never actually put this in here yeah actually I'll have the same sort of problem I need to fix that open day mode nope we don't want to do that man I'll fix that card. Uh, if you t here's the this is what I want to explain. I wonder if anyone commented on this card. Doesn't appear when it has. All right. So the way this card works is that it works around lifelink creatures. Creatures that have the ability lifelink. You can tap it for ten mana, any color, and then. Each creature with lifelink gains lifelink an additional time, an additional time. An additional, it gains lifelink four additional times. Um, you gain life 
equal to its creature's power times four. And you can read the text here. I can't show you the entire thing. So basically, if it was a one, if it cost, if it happened to be a power of one, you gain four life instead. If you have the power of two, you gain eight life instead. That sort of thing. Let's see what's going on to the next card. League of Kittens. This is pretty cute, honestly. Yeah, it's amazing. Cards yet specifically. I don't know if I'm gonna do that. I'll have to change the things to do that. Um whenever League of Kittens enters the battlefield, it gains X one one counters. Plus one plus one counters. League of Kins can block an additional X creatures in combat. So whenever you pay play this card, you pay X additional to additional to either a sun or a or a Plus two to stack its creature and gain life equal to its toughness. Minus eight to pay for life. Life and return all the cats from your cat from your graveyard to the battlefield under your control. It's 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 pretty much mean. I'll have to eventually add that card and look at it again uh, at some point. Rose. The cards are recently made. Uh, it's just a one-two. It's, it's, it's obviously a common. There's no specific reason to say it's a one-two cat. Wow. Meow. Meow. Fly cat. It has flying. <laughs> it's a flying cat. Woohoo. Honestly, this is definitely a common. It might even be lower than a common, honestly. But there's no lower rate in a common, so I had to do with that. Two eyed cat. It costs one and one. It is. It is indestructible as long as it's blocking. So if you're attacking with it, it is indestructible. Oh, it's, no, I'm sorry. If it's blocking creature, it's indestructible. Um, two eyes gains plus one plus one and it gains indestructible until it turn. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really sure exactly where it is. I'm putting this as an uncommon because of the context. It does have an ability that could make it instructable all the time, pretty much, or even super overpowered. That's why I made it common. A uncommon card. Poor Ring. Okay, I actually have a favor on this one. <laughs> it's cute, isn't it? It's a cute little, little, little poor little kitty cat getting all wet. Tap two creatures. <laughs> That's literally what it does. It doesn't do much else. Moonlit. Uh, don't know how this card works too much, but um, it's a defender. You tap five to create a moon token. Whenever you create a moon token, um, it can attack. Whenever you create a moon token, oh, you. Create a new token. You can attack as if you're the hand defender. Not a very good card, but you know, that's why it's coming. Not a great card, honestly. Skull Cat. Death Touch and Lifelink. Um, it's uncommon. Death Touch and Lifelink has Death Touch and Lifelink, so it deals. If it, it destroys a creature and it also gains two life roots. Honestly, if this was to actually put a point in the game, I could see it being a uh, common. There are cards that like there are one ones that actually have depth to life links, so that's why I didn't specifically say it. It could potentially be a common card, not a common card. Next one. Here's the moon token. So I didn't actually explain what that moon was. Um, you can sacrifice it to gain four life. It's basically a food token. And it wasn't really good. It wasn't a good option for this, so I just put it in. Can't be destroyed. That's one thing. Um, token artifacts can be destroyed. Emblems cannot be. Emblems have no, cannot be targeted or anything. All right, next one. Playmate. Two target creatures plus two plus two into another two. Reasonable, reasonable to be in common. 
could be uncommon, depending on what it is. But it's, when I put the comments on there, you guys can comment on any cards you do see. Never mind, I'm ready, not ready to do that. We'll look at that in another, in another time. Um, that's going to be in the stream for this one. Um, I am going to show you one Planeswalker from a set that I'm making. That I'm currently making. I will actually plan to actually get this set. Let me go and get this one. It's going to be, it's all the way back to the bottom, back, I'm pretty sure. Here it is. I'm going to look at this one. I'll just look at all the different ones because I will be looking at all these cards in a different video. It costs one sun. It's a mythic. Hexproof. If it is destroyed, though, you lose the game. Plus one agony card on your fields. Exile any card on your field. You gain one equal to its mana cost. Very good. Useful. And this is actually what's weird about the, all these things. Uh, it, it comes 12 12. It can, you can put zero to make it a 12 12 Sphinx with flying and lifelink indestructible until end of turn. You can only use this ability, you can you may use this ability at any time. So it does have that ability. You can use the ability anytime. It's a pretty cool card, to be honest. Bad news to see this is why if it's destroyed, you lose the game. And I will point out this entire deck has five cards that all have any time, as many times you want. Uh, it becomes 12 12 unicorn with instructional hex proof and life link until that turn. Again, really powerful. This is why all these are mythics. <laughs> but if you can't, if you don't have any life points, if you're at one life, you can't do that build. So. Black, it is a that's the thing. So if you if an instant or source instant sorcery or spell hits you or does, does damage to you, you lose the game. It's that simple. It's plus one ability as it becomes a 12-12 force with indestructible and death touch until in turn. You may use it in the next ability any time. And minus one, you print all damage from non-creature sources this turn. You can only use that during your turn. That's why it's a little bit it's not as good. Well, you want to have a little one as well. Face me through red. Heck less two spells on your turn to lose the game. Watch out. You lose the game if you do not cast two spells. Uh, um, you make in plus one is that you may cast two red two spells for two red minute each. You may cast no more than two spells this turn. In this way, you may use this ability at any time. Pretty cool card, right? Um, uh, Fancy Mythic Red becomes a twelve twelve dragon with. Flying and trample into in a turn, we use this do this at any time. So minus one. Yeah, it's an interesting card still so, because you still yes. I wish it's an interesting card because the, and the reason why I had this thing is all these all these planeswalkers have um a possibility that you lose the game. I've not seen we have to we'll see the um uh, next. But um Larry Planeswalker Unicorn. It becomes a 12 12 unicorn and with all abilities and all of all creatures on the field, but loses hex proof to the turn. So, if you actually, if your one of the creatures happen to have hex proof, well, guess what? You don't have to worry about it. Um, you cannot minus two, you cannot lose the game this turn. You may use this but any turn. This includes fancy mythics losing situations. That's these other cards. All these are fancy mythics. And I think we have one more. Green one. Yeah. Plus one, you gain five life. But if you take damage from a creature, you lose the game. So that means yourself takes damage. That's what it is. 
pretty cool. And welcome to whoever's uh, watching now. Uh, um, it's, it's an interesting concept, honestly. It's being a full 12 creature of, fan, of tramp on lifelink. Definitely mythic, you know, gals for me. All right, so let's see. Well, what's our next card going to be? I was thinking about going up, but since there's someone watching now, I was going to go on. Um, let's see what we got here. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Where is it? Fantasy Summon. Okay. Fantasy Summon. Uh, you play pay two and one water to search your deck for Fantasy Mythic Planeswalker and put it into your hands. When a Fantasy Mythic Planeswalker enters, you draw a card. Interesting concept for this card. I mean, by the way, I just want to point out for anyone, this is me. I made all the cards. Made all these cards. I, there are these, and this, and anything has fancy on this set is mine. Card. That's why I, I purpose to make sure it was not insanely powerful. All right, let's see what we've got next one. Next one, please. Uh, Moon Cleric. One of one thing does not have a uh, mystic. Being mystic in this one. This is all of mine, though. Uh, you pay two islands, tap, to place a loyalty counter on a target planeswalker you control. Zero two common card, definitely common, no doubt. And if you do want to look at these, you can just go ahead and look, go to uh, mttcarsmith.com and search this name. MK, MK, I, A, A9. That will show you exactly what my um, the old cards I've created. Now, to me, I'll make a cards constantly if I can. Healer of the Fantasy. Uh, <laughs> By flanking, you can tap it to gain one life. So either you can attack with it to gain one life, or you can tap it to gain one life. Which one would you like to do? Right. right. <laughs> either way, it's a good it's a good con on it's a good concept. To having that one. Uh Magic Fantasy Wizard. It's hex proof. That's the sort of thing coming from that blue planeswalker. Look at that multicolored planeswalker. Whenever it attacks or blocks, deals one damage to all opponents. To point this out very quickly, all opponents. So if you're playing with a game of more three or more players, it's all opponents. So you deal one damage to each each opponent, not just just the one. Okay. Um, cool. Fantasy Thief. Another one of these cards I didn't, wasn't really too proud of, honestly. But um, you may choose not to tap it. You can king control of a target creature for as long as Fantasy Thief is tapped. It's actually in the wrong word. It should actually be changed. So I will need to change that eventually if I can. Um, but it's, it, the reason I made it on common is because of the fact that it can control a creature. It's too. It's really too powerful. If to be, it really is too powerful to be uncommon, to be a common card. I misspoke. All right, next one here. Cup of victory. I actually decided to make this card after I think I didn't even think about putting this into the set first. But this allows you to draw a card for each creature destroyed. If you don't destroy a creature, if you don't control in combat. Now here's the thing. I won't point out. A lot of these cards have the ability Fancy, which is a special ability that occurs on certain cards. Um, for example, this one says, If any Of uh, your attacking creatures or were planeswalkers, then you may use this ability 
and yeah, you use this ability that made it a creature, draw two cards instead of one card. So basically you double the amount of cards you actually get. Fantasy Archer, uh, Death Touch. They have fantasy. If it attacks a planeswalker, it just opponents take three damage. Talk about insane, honestly. <laughs> Basically, you don't want this creature around because it attacks a planeswalker. It deals you three damage. You definitely don't want this guy. Don't you don't want this card around if you have a planeswalker. If you don't have a planeswalker, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I've gone too far. Healer for healing fantasy. Uh, target creature that was destroyed this turn if you turn your hand. So it's a card that revives a creature. That was just a this um destroyed this turn. And then the fantasy thing is that if it was if a creature destroyed was a planeswalker, you may place them to the field tapped. And anything tapped untapped at the beginning of your upkeep. Next card is gonna be Fancy Monk. Uh, because a creature plays the Lynching on each planes walker. It's a pretty decent card. It's Defender. You can pay XX, which means you pay twice as much mana as you would for X, and two, sun, two yellow or white cards, which you like to call it. And um, X Loyalty. Onto a planeswalker. It's it's pretty good, pretty powerful, honestly. I don't know for sure if it should actually be a um, common or not. I'll have to think about that. But right now it's a common. Book of Fantasy. Oh, <laughs> this card is crazy. <laughs> If a planeswalker uses an ability that duplicates an ability, except the planeswalker does not gain or lose any counters. So basically, if you saw some of the creatures, you might want to go back a few minutes in the video, but there was a card if it there's an ability. If it has a zero or if it has a plus one or a minus one, it does not it doubles that ability. But it doesn't actually Gaining and gaining or losing any counters, so you can use that ability twice. Now, now the second ability of each one of those planeswalkers obviously doesn't work because you obviously can't make a creature itself twice. It doesn't really do anything. But it is. and if it if a planeswalker uses a creature transformation, it actually I gain two life instead of duplicating that ability. That's an advanced one. Of those. That's the reason why you can't, because you can't actually duplicate yourself. You can't be a creature twice. It's actually very difficult to actually cast, which is why it's rare. A fantasy dwarf, double strike, tap it for two, and two swamps. It gains an instructable until end of turn. This is decent. Decent card, that's why it's common. It's not too powerful. So as long as you have at least four toughness, I think it's what it is. Yeah, four toughness, then you are fine. You probably still die, but you know. There you go. Next card is gonna be Fancy Rider. <laughs> oh I this card's insane, honestly. Um you pay three mountains or fire type, whatever fire man source. It gains trample until end of turn. Watch out. So it's now gonna be five three to a trample. And they can pay you can pay um three forest or green mana. And it gains life link until end of turn. Sheesh, we're talking about an insane card here. And also you can pay six to make it not be able to be blocked this turn. I honestly was thinking about making this a mythic card, to be honest. 
I haven't, I decided not to do it in the moment because of the fact that it's actually not super powerful because you actually can't, you, you can use, you have to have enough to use this, the third ability in order to use either one of the other two abilities pretty much. I mean, technically you could not, but for the context of this, oh, I forgot, which, this is actually a deck that I think is correct. It doesn't have any lands in it. I will eventually get this deck. Hopefully, I'll be able to use it. But definitely a rare. Or at least it might be a mythic. If this was actually put into a game, no doubt it'd be a mythic. Next card is the Fantasy Pirate. Ooh. I really would not like playing as this card. It may reveal the top card of any player's deck once per turn. Um, then you can pay three mana, the three converted mana cost, and pay X mana, where X is the revealed player's card. Converted mana cost. Um, then you may pay, you may cast this card this turn. If it is an instant or sorcery, you have to pay, it has to be an instant or sorcery for you to work. And you can't draw your next upkeep. That's the only, that's the only disadvantage of why it's not rare. Because you cannot draw your next turn if you do that. It's it's the one disadvantage about this card. It's not great. Um, the sheriff. I'm not really sure why I call this card the sheriff. Honestly, it's not. It's obviously not fantasy. Um, whenever, this is actually a really annoying card, honestly. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you flip a coin. If it lands heads, it's possible you get put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. If it lands tails, you put a minus 1-1 one, one counter on it. So it's, it's luck-based in this case. And fantasy, all creatures that have the same counter on them are plus 2, plus 2, when plus two, plus two, plus two, enters the field. So, if a player is field when you do this, I mean, it has the same number of counters, either way, it gets plus two plus two. So, either it gets better, more, it gives more attack, or it uh, loses attack. This is the reason why it's a rare, for sure, is because, well, it's an A3 creature. It's an insane creature. It doesn't say another creature too, so it actually affects itself as well. All right, next creature or card, Fancy Mage. Oh boy. Um, whenever you, <laughs> this is a thing. This is something I would think actually would come from one of the master sets, to be honest. Uh, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, you gain one life. And um, if you cast both an instant and sorcery on this turn, you gain four life points. So it actually kind of makes you basically overpowered because if you happen to cast an instant or sorcery on your turn, obviously you can't. You can technically cast sorceries on your opponent's turn only generally, but there is some cards that do allow you to cast it on your at any time. Um, if you have 24 or 4 life points, it gets plus 2 plus 2. So it's 3 3 creature. That's what I mean. A common. I thought, I mean, it might be, should it be rare? You can comment down below once. Um, I know I didn't put the um, chat in this. I will put that on the stream I have tomorrow. I will be doing a stream, another one of these things tomorrow at the, I believe, I believe it's at 620. I'll have to check that. I don't know when the stream is. I don't know when the stream is. It's it's um I think at six o'clock tomorrow. I'm not a hundred percent sure about that. I'm actually. Gonna go ahead and leave the aliens. So I'm actually I'm watching the stream right now, so I'm actually 
Yes, so that's why there's actually two, that's why I know there's two people watching. Now there's one person watching. Yeah, I believe it's actually going to be at 6 o'clock tomorrow. You'll be able to look at my channel and figure it out. Under my channel name and go figure that out. Oh, my camera is working. <laughs> I thought it wasn't working. Uh, I think I see Wise Masters, an uncommon card. Um, you tap it. If you pay two and tap it, you draw a card. Pay two red and games three, you deal three damage to your carpet. It's really powerful. I think honestly, it does cost quite a bit. So that's why it's not that's why it's not common or rare. Final protection. I love this card. This is a card I would love to make this in the in Magic. Um, Final protection prevents all damage that you would take this turn. That's another thing for one of those planeswalkers that prevent it can prevent you from losing the game. It's, it's it, I know it's common, but you know it's it. All right, so I think I mentioned this early in the stream. But um, just to go into this, in case someone decide, since the one person decided to leave. <laughs> Deal three damage. I don't know. I wish I knew exactly when the stream was, but we'll, we'll figure out. So I actually put this in the in the in this card. You deal three damage to each other, you can pay, but if you pay two life, the fancy thing happens, and then you deal six damage instead. I think we're actually getting close to the end here. Sure. Uh, can I put this? Come on, while we leave the stream for a second. Um. Yeah, so this one here, tap our creature. Let me see if I put this to think. Yes, yeah, so the next live stream for me will be tomorrow. So this if you're here will be at seven thirty tomorrow. Okay, seven thirty. No, I looked. I will put make sure I put the um chat on as well on that stream i didn't put another i wasn't sure how if, if there was anyone going to be watching it okay so this one here you tap our creature if you pay two life then you can um deal to damage the target Okay. Fantasy healing. Um to the live stream. 
if you pay, if you pay two life though, you actually gain eight life points instead. Sounds cool. To be honest, that's gonna be something that's gonna be useful. And so if you pay two life to cast a spell, then you actually get eight life instead. So you so instead of you gaining four life. You lose two life, and you actually, you actually gain six life. I'm almost at the end of my thing, so I'm actually going to be in the stream. We're actually close to the end, actually, I think. We have Fantasy Forest. Lance. Ooh. Um, it adds two red mana, or two some, two, some color mana. And you tap it for two or something, and then you get to go ahead and do some ability. Like, for example, this one gains two life. Fantasy Fire, which is deals two damage to any target. I'm not going to go over these things. I just discussed what they were, so... Uh, Fantasy Kingdom destroys any non creature spell. Tapping two. All these are uncommon. Play a spell from your graveyard. You still pay its cost, but you double its effect. That's probably the, this is probably the best one and probably the most expensive if there is actually paid or cost for. <laughs> that's actually insane. Kingdom of Fantasy. Um, this is actually an enchantment. Uh, you can pay as if you cast a spell with fantasy. It means there's there's any card that has fantasy. Then you get to place it under King of Fantasy. You may cast spells for any time for free. Use what is under the fantasy text. I may need to add that card. <laughs> You may cast this that spell. That spell anytime. Yeah, so it's basically flat. Basically, I'm giving any creature that has, or any spell or creature that has flat, that fancy gets flash. Um, if you exile, cast a spell on this under King of Anthony, you exile it. Okay, this is one of my favorite cards from this. Uh, fancy book. You get to tap it one. Draw a card. It costs nothing. And put a spell with fantasy on top of your deck. Um, I might have to edit that card because that does not look right. <laughs> put a spell with fantasy on top of your deck. Well, that doesn't seem right. I, to be more precise, what it does is you actually can put any spell that's in your graveyard or in your hand or anywhere on top of your deck and there's some ch champions and some things that do that too oh uh, we are running to, to the end here oh boy <laughs> yeah this isn't this is actually a losing card this game can end this can lose your game or can win your game. So you can search a library for any card. This is a card that's insane if you use it correctly. You if you search your library for a card, you may play that card for free this turn. But at the end of your next turn, so if you end your end step, that's your and then the next turn after that is the game. So you better hope that you get cards. You better use a card. Better use it wisely and get a card that allows you to win the game. Otherwise, you're probably going to lose the game. Fantasy destruction. Oh. This is one of those cards that you might want to get out of final choice. It's just it. You deal ten damage in card, but if you control nothing other than lands or legendary cards. Then you get to deal 20 damage. So if you decide to sacrifice somehow, if you somehow sacrifice all of your cards except for lands and legendary cards, then guess what? 
you deal 20 damage and you instantly win the game pretty much. That's where this is insane because you can cast this spell for free. This mirror cost, it doesn't matter. You gotta watch out for this one. You gotta watch out for that card because it can it can basically win the game. Reflect damage, any damage that you would take this turn is instead killed to the cacking or tasting player. Yeah, it's, that's pretty annoying. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna reflect back to you. Oh, you cast a spell and hit me. It's going back to you. That's something you might want to use. Right? I would hope it is. Fancy limits. Oh boy. Opponents can't attack with three more creatures each turn. Nah, doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter too much. To be honest. Um, basically means that your your who your opponents cannot attack with three or more creatures. Change the past. Oh, uh, you place here's so this one's actually a little weird. Basically, you restart your turn. Whatever you played that turn, earn whatever it is, you put it back into your hand or into the field. You untap all your mana, and any damage done that turn would have been infected. But it does not affect your opponents. So if your opponent happened to block, guess what? Their creatures are tapped still. It restarts your turn. It doesn't restart your opponent's turn. Okay. Ring of okay, we have some artifacts here. Ring of Fantasy it has fantasy whenever it attacks or block. You gain one life for it for each planeswalk you control. Again, that's where you want to have one of the six planeswalks at least, if not more. Uh, sort of fancy, sort of fancy. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, deals one damage more for each player to gain control. So if it's happened to be doing what happened to have one power, it deals one more damage for if you had control for each one for other players or control. Uh, let's see, Dra drag dagger of fancy. You is annoying. Um, you can't be blocked except by fancy creatures or planeswalker creatures. There is not really anything such a thing as a planeswalker creature unless it is using an ability that says it's a creature. Yeah, so creatures with fancy in their name are fancy creatures. Doesn't affect everything. Uh, fancy tower. Uh, maybe cast fancy spell. You gain two life. An insane card, honestly. If you are playing a fancy fancy deck, uh, maybe but you must you may play fancy cards from the bit your graveyard. If you do, then you put them in the bottom of the deck. Fancy castle. Um, you can basically it's a rare. And there's very good reason for it being rare. Um, if you play a creature and gain one life for each for the creature, if you, the creature that you control played. If it, you play a fancy creature from your, you, oh, you can play fancy creatures from your graveyard. That's one good thing, a huge thing. And um, if the fantasy creature is played from your graveyard in order to do a fantasy counter on it. If a creature with a fantasy counter is destroyed, then you exile. That's the only bad thing. But you can play it from graveyards. You can play you basically it's a second life. Um a fancy elk, we're actually getting to the top. I think there's like six cards left. Uh, you pay X life and add X man, but if you pay five for more life, you create a five five elk. Here's the elk, I think, is the next card. It? Yeah, so five five elk. Uh, 
Fantasy Forest. Oh, this is someone someone commented on the last card. This card. Not this card, the next card, I believe. Uh, you create X fantasy new features by paying I specifically replied to this. I want to tell you guys about it. So the one person, the other person is watching. Fancy Dragon. Here's the guard comment. Well, she didn't. I don't see it. The character is it here. I don't know what he's talking about. The flavor text, terrible. Flavor text. Anyways, that's the where it's. Yes. Now, I specifically replied to this and said it is summoned by an instant. Okay, it's the forest. Anyways, I don't know who this guy is, but thank you for saying it's nice. I don't know why. That might, I don't know if I've been sarcastic. He didn't put it in quotes, though, so I can't tell. And that, I believe, is the first card that I created in the game for this turn. I'll look here just to make sure. Yep, that is the first card. And you can see this is the entire deck. There's actually four pages of it. But basically, here's the entire thing. Basically, this entire deck is based off of fantasy creatures. I have a fantasy. Um, I will be doing this again tomorrow at um, 7.30, I believe it is. Yeah, 7.30. At 7.30 tomorrow, I will be doing this again. And then at 